What's up, everybody? Lamb checking in to give you some of the notable injuries and trades that have gone down in the NBA the last couple of days. We'll start at the top with the most notable one, the Marcus Cousins, torn Achilles, out for the season. This sucks for this dude and for the Pelicans and for just NBA fans across the board. One of the best players in the league. We're not going to be able to see him the rest of the year. Now, as far as the team goes, they have a lot on their plate. They are currently holding a playoff seed in the Western Conference, uh, the tougher of the two conferences. But also, this is a guy who in the summer is going to be a free agent, and he is a hot commodity. A lot of people want the rights to Boogie Cousins. Are you going to want to pay a guy a four- or five-year deal upwards of $200 million coming off an Achilles injury? It is one of the hardest injuries to overcome if you're an NBA player. I mean, you just look down the list. There's been so many that have had their careers cut short because of this injury. Anthony Davis, the, the main piece to the Pelicans puzzle, he's going to be a free agent in a couple of years. And if you don't bring back Boogie, does this mean that he's out the door because you're not surrounding him with enough talent? Also, Gentry has a lot on his plate too. The New Orleans Pelicans, only 352 possessions all season have they had with Boogie and Anthony Davis on the sideline. So one thing that the Pelicans had an advantage over every team in the league was at all times they had an all-star caliber big on the court for the most part. Now without Boogie, it's going to be interesting to see how they attack the season going forward. As of today, John Wall has been ruled out for up to six to eight weeks. Arthroscopic knee surgery on his left knee. Uh, Ten games into the year against the Dallas Mavericks, he got banged up. And he hasn't been the same since, you know, it was something, there was a picture circulating last year around the playoffs that his knee was like three times the size of a normal knee because of all the water he had in it. Also had surgery in the off season. So he's averaging a little better than his career averages this year, 19.4 points per game and 9.3 assists per game. But with the Wizards now being sidelined without their best player, it's going to be hard for them to hold on to that playoff spot that they have right now. It's going to be interesting to see what adjustments the Wizards make going forward. Andre Roberson, shout out to Tim. Tim's boy, Andre Roberson. Uh, he suffered a ruptured left patellar tendon. Uh, Roberson is a big, big piece to what the Oklahoma City Thunder like to do, whether you agree with it or not, whether you have Tim's take where he thinks he should be in the G League. Or you have my take where I think that he is a guy that his stats don't show up on the stat sheet. Um, you know, only five points a game, four, four rebounds a game roughly. But he's a player that he brings those intangibles that don't show up in the box score. Um, when Roberson is not on the court, it is a significant absence. Uh, Westbrook, Roberson, Paul George, Mello, and Steven Adams, that was their starting five. And... When those four guys are on the court without Roberson, they are allowing 114.5 points per 100 possessions. Roughly 20 points less when he's on the court in those 100 possessions. So it's going to be a lot to ask for a team that already has a lot of defensive liabilities losing their best defensive player on the wing, especially in the West where you have so many great wing players on the West that you have to worry about. So that's a big loss there for the Oklahoma City Thunders. Uh, promising news for the Bucks of youth, yes. Jabari Parker will be making his return against the Knicks after missing a year with a torn ACL. Roughly a, to the day almost, maybe a week off to when he did tear his ACL. Um, I'd be hyped. This is a team that I've uh, hitched the bandwagon on, of course, because of uh, my fellow lamb, Yanis Antetokounmpo. But this is a team that if they can stay healthy, you look at that starting five that they can be throwing at you in the playoffs, watch out. Bledsoe, Middleton, Giannis, Jabari Parker, and Henson, who's coming along ever since Jason Kidd went out the door. So it's going to be fun. I, I wish nothing but the best for Jabari Parker. I think he's a great, great basketball player. It just sucks that he's had two knee surgeries on the same knee in 18 months. So it's going to be interesting to monitor that. Last but not least... Monday night, we get the big news that Blake Griffin is taking his talents to Motown, Detroit. Uh, the Clippers in this trade, and I'm going to read you off the trade right now, Tobias Harris, Avery Badley, and Bojan Marjanovic. I think I butchered that. And they got a first and second round pick. The Pistons, in return, got Blake Griffin, Bryce Johnson, and Willie Reed. Um, obviously, the big get is Blake Griffin. Uh, the Clippers, seems like they're cleaning house. You know, they get rid of CP3 in the summer. Then they get rid of Chris Paul now. And you got to be wondering, what is DeAndre Jordan thinking right now? Um, 
It's uh, it's a mess over there in the Clippers. I think they're going into full rebuild. They get a they get a couple of good pieces back. Tobias Harris is having a career year. He lead he led Detroit in scoring. Avery Bradley's on a one year deal, so he's probably going to be out the door. But for the most part, they get Tobias Harris, who's still pretty young, and he's coming off one of his best seasons so far. Um, the biggest get, like we said, is Blake Griffin. Now here's the thing with Blake Griffin: stellar, stellar basketball player, one of the top players in the league. The issue I have with him is. I never know what I'm going to get from him. Your best ability as an athlete is availability. And the fact that Blake misses so many games throughout the year because of injuries, it's uh, it's alarming. And this is a guy that just signed the max deal over the summer. Five years, $171 million. They just gave him that in July. And now Detroit's going to have to inherit that. Now pair that up by 2019-20, you're going to be allocating $61 million to Andre Drummond and Blake Griffin, that front court, in a league where... You need shooters. It seems like Detroit is going back to the old mold of the bigs. Um, you'll be here to you'll be able to hear more about this stuff on the Veterans Minimum podcast. Give that a listen and subscribe on iTunes and SoundCloud. And as far as I go, I'll catch you guys soon.